Hello, this is Christy. Today I'm going to show you a simple way to create a 3D object from a 2D object. And this tutorial follows on my tutorial about distorting objects from previous episodes. And today we will look at creating a 3D book from a 2D book using some downloadable files, which I am providing for free. So I'm going to start a new document here, file new in Photoshop choose a custom size 2000 pixels and create. My background is white. So I'm going to import a image of a book that is straight and flat like this. So this is my book. When you drag a picture inside of another document in Photoshop, it creates it as a smart object. So you can manipulate it, resize it without loss in quality. If you don't know what that means, uh, if you can go to my playlist on Photoshop, uh, I have a, an episode there about explain that explains why it's better to use smart objects instead of resizing and transforming your images uh, without converting them to smart objects because you're losing quality. So um, as you can see, my uh, the Photoshop has transform this image into a smart object so I can move it around and it is on its own layer of course and I can resize it without loss in quality. So now I want to make this into a 3D book and of course you can use the distort tool to do that or the perspective tool but you need a bit of a guideline because you know you want to get a nice natural looking 3D perspective effect. So in order to do that, I have asked my brother to create several 3D images and I'm going to show them to you right here. So these are 3D templates that you can load into Photoshop and then you can transform your object to match these green outlines and it will give you a 3D book. It is actually a 3D book with a green cover. So I'm going to just use one of these as a reference. So I'm going to use book four. I'm going to make this available as a download. So if you can look in the description, you will find a link to download these images to use in your own projects. So I'm going to drag one of these into my document here. And you can see again, Photoshop has turned it into a smart object. I am okay with the size. Press enter to accept the uh, transform. So see, this is a 3D book with a green cover. Now I want to use this to put my book on top of it. So I'm gonna take the layer with my flat book and move it at the top like this. So it's now in front. And also I need to control T to transform and I want to distort this. So I'm going to right click on the object and select distort. Now, whichever corners I pull, my book will be distorted according to where I put the corner. So all I have to do is just closely match where the corners of this book are like that. Okay. And if I need, of course, you want to make it more accurate. So you need to zoom in control plus will zoom in and space while I'm uh, clicking will allow me to pan around my document so I can move to the different corners. If I want, I can control plus some more and space, hold down the space key and pan around. And I'm going to take each corner and match it to the corner of my 3D book. Press space, click around to go to the other corner like so. And make sure it matches exactly. Go down on the other corner like that. And then finally the other corner like so. If you want to be sure that the uh, press enter to accept your changes. So if you want to be sure that your the green book doesn't actually show through. So you can see now that's not a very natural effect because although my book is now 3D looking, I have this green here. So of course my cover is red and my layer with the book is green. So I want to change this to match my color of the book. So I'm going to click on the book layer and I'm going to adjust the hue to match the red. So I'm going to go to window adjustments and I will bring the adjustment panel and I'm going to use the hue and saturation. So with my book layer selected with my 3D book layer selected. I'm going to click on hue saturation here and that's going to add a new adjustment layer 
and I'm, I can change the hue here. So I'm going to drag this and watch watch the books book color here. I'm going to drag this until it becomes sort of red, reddish. If you want more lightness, pull the lightness up and the saturation maybe if you want to make it more saturated and then pull it until it matches exactly the color of the cover. So there you go. It is now red. All I am, uh, all, and I have this adjustment layer. I can, of course, turn it off and it becomes green again, right? And to keep things together, and I, I so that I can move things around easily, I will select my original book layer, hold down the control key, press the adjustment layer, and then press the book layer. And I can control G to group them or just drag all of them onto this bin icon here. So I've created a book. I'm going to double click on its name and call it 3D book. Okay. So now my folder, my layers are together in a folder. So they are like a unique object, all of them together. So I can manipulate them. I can control T to transform, resize. And I can do whatever I want. As a bonus, you can add a shadow to this. So I'm going to open this to make it look really 3D like it's standing up. You can open this and click on your book, uh, the green book one, the green book layer. And then from the effects down here, you can choose drop shadow. So this will add a drop shadow to my layer. You can adjust the opacity, although you don't see it right now. Um, I'm going to just make it distance it like that and make it a bit larger. So you can see now I can change the opacity of this layer and I'm going to show you what to do to make it look 3D. So press OK. We don't uh, care about the distance right now. And in the layer panel, I want to make this a, a floor shadow, not a drop shadow. Drop shadow is behind the object. But what I want to do is a drop shadow like it's on the floor. So the book is standing up. I want to make my shadow uh, drop uh, floor shadow. So I'm going to right click on the drop shadow effect here and choose create layer that will actually make a layer from the shadow only from that effect like so. So you can see now I can turn this on and off. I can, uh, of course, move it around uh, if I select on this uh, layer. So all I can try and do is just create a fake sort of floor shadow from this. Um, so I'm going to control T to transform this and I'm going to hold down the shift key and pull from the top. Let me just zoom in a bit pull from this top transform and take this all the way down here and right click on the object. Don't accept the transform yet. Right click and say skew. So I can skew and then again from the middle transform, I can pull to the right. OK, you can achieve this also with the distort. So if you don't want to skew and scale, you right click and say distort. And then you want to bring the bottom part to align with the book, but then the the, 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 the upper part of the shadow, you want it kind of going backwards and up a bit, right? So let's see, I want to uh, choose, move this around to make the shadow longer. And I want to move this corner to be behind the book like so, and this corner to be sort of in front here, uh, like, like so, but the book is kind of thick. So um, you want to move it there. So, okay, so we have now the shadow. If you want to move it lower, you can you can make it look sort of like a flat. This actually dictates kind of the angle you're looking at uh, with your fake camera. So this is kind of okay, I guess, like this. Press enter to accept. You can move it a bit to the front here to create this a little bit of a ambient occlusion effect in the bottom there. And if you want to really add more dramat dramatic uh, effect to this, you can go to filter and blur and choose motion blur. And then, you know, you see, look, the shadow has moved slightly. It, it's, it's looking like it's blurred to the other. If your direction is not the same, you can you can turn this this uh, angle around to kind of match the angle you want the blur to be. So if you look down here now, it's kind of it's not blurred in the same direction. So you can tweak it. Just put it upwards a bit. No, that's too much. Move it down so that you get a sharp line on the right side there. Press OK. And now you can see that the uh, because of the blur, it looks OK in the back. But in the front, it 
is kind of coming in the front of the book so you can um, you can either just scale that a bit to match the corner of the book there scale that in a bit so that it doesn't go outside and then you can probably delete this part in front so if I zoom in at like that I want to delete this part here so you can just use a simple polygonal lasso tool click somewhere outside here click along the edge of the book and then kind of click around like this and then delete that make sure when you do that you're selecting the book shadow layer now click on the selection tool remove your selection and there you have it I have a 3d book and I've got a shadow and um, you can manipulate that any way you like and again because I, I stayed inside of this folder my shadow is inside the folder so I can just close that folder and I can move around everything together with the folder and the book and the 3d and the shadow so if now I want to put a background sort of on my on my picture I can put a background here and create like a promotional banner or whatever you want to create I can bring in another image so I found a picture online of a tabletop and I'm gonna load that now I'm just gonna bring it here I went to unsplash and I found it and you see this is a table uh, with some books on it and some leaves so I would like to use this image as my background now let's see uh, of course you want to see that the picture matches the position of your object or you can tweak your object so I've dragged this picture in here I'm gonna make it larger so that it fits my uh, scene and covers the entire background and press enter to accept this is again a smart object and I'm gonna put my 3d book on top of this I'm gonna move my book at the top now one thing to note is of course okay I found a picture that matches the perspective of my object and sort of the position so I can sort of place this book onto my uh, table virtual table anyway and maybe match the bottom of my book with the bottom of these books that are lying on the table here so that it, it looks like they've been kind of sitting next to each other or maybe a little bit in front doesn't matter and okay so the shadow seems to be in the same sort of rough direction I can probably play a bit more with the shadow it doesn't matter and one thing to note is that my picture now has lost it's colored the leaves are not green anymore the reason for that is because we have applied that adjustment layer on the background of the image so that we could make it turn it from green into red so let me show you how to fix that before we play around with the positioning so what I want to do is open this folder with the 3d book and you can see here that my green book has this layer on top of it that is the adjustment layer that we use to change the color if I zoom in and I turn this off let me just hide the book for a bit you see this layer is red but if I turn off the adjustment layer it turns back to green the way that I had it the first time so what I want to do now is make sure that my adjustment layer only affects this book this green book nothing else so that my picture of the books with the leaves remains unchanged so how do I do that the very easy way to do this is just delete this layer the adjustment layer and the mask so we will first select the green book okay so we will make a selection on the green book first so I'm gonna hold down control key and if you notice when I when I hold hover over the layer it the the um, cursor changes to a selection uh, tool so I'm gonna click on the layer so this one cr with the control key creates a selection on the contents of that layer right so anything um, if I apply an adjustment layer now this will just apply to this it will basically create a mask that will limit the effect to this particular book here right so remember what we did we added a hue and saturation um, adjustment layer click on that so now we can choose the red color again we just slide down to the red color okay make it maybe more saturated and a bit lighter like this okay and you can see that my my adjustment layer only affects this book because I've created a selection before and it's creating a mask inside of that selection you can see the mask here on the layer has the shape of the book this is the mask that affects where the effect is applied 
Okay, now let's turn back the book back on. And here we go. My book is there. It's everything in this group here. It stays in there. And my background is unaffected by that. So look, I have a 3D book placed inside of a 3D scene. Of course, I can make this smaller, Control T to transform it a bit like that maybe. Uh, depends on how large you want it to be, you know, like this. So I have created a 3D scene with a 3D book standing up like that. And the shadow is in the right place. The, the background sort of book table matches the position and it kind of looks okay, I guess. This is, I mean, you can do this without resorting to a 3D software. And in a future tutorial, I will look at um, Adobe Dimension, which allows you to create real 3D scenes and place objects in them, map textures to them, map images of books and stuff like that, and labels and make them look like a real picture. And even then you can import pictures into your scene and we will look at that in a future episode. But here today, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to find those downloadable files in the description of this uh, video. And you're, you're welcome to have them and use them in your projects. I have made several 3D images there. Um, and if I go in here, so you have the uh, taller books, you have uh, shorter books, you have thicker ones, thinner ones, you can use these. Of course, I didn't do a version with the um, the book spine because, of course, you may not always have the picture of the book spine. So in that case, your book spine would be blank or empty or you would, you know, if but if you have a book spine, you can actually flip one of these over and put the book spine on it the same way that I've matched the uh, position of the book using the distort tool. So this is a very nice and useful application of the distort tool to map uh, a flat object to a 3D object so that you bring in. So thanks for watching again and please subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my tutorials and stay tuned for new Photoshop tutorials coming soon. See you next time.